bless his name. And look at somebody and say, I'm on my way. Oh, bless his name. Philippians, the fourth chapter. If you would allow me today, I'd like to just do some teaching and instructing today. There is such a a struggle that it seems that the people of God are in. And I know I'm the only one sensing it and I travel across this country as you know and out of this country. And the body of Christ is going through right now. And you don't make it any easier when we decide that we're going to give in to the wiles, give in to the methods. <clears throat> What's really happening, if you take a look at Christendom, I'm not going to have you standing long, but what's really happening if you take a look at Christendom right now is all of that glitter that, we, that you've seen, all of that is tarnishing now. And what really matters is your walk with God. You, you say what you want to say. It's, it's, it's not another church. It's not another place of worship. It's not bouncing around here and there. It is my walk with God. Let me be a little worldly. This is a time when the rubber meets the road. We are under such attack. Amen. Well, let me, let me get into this because I want to go there in a little while. Father, we thank you now. We bless you. All things in thy precious name. I pray today that you will grant us clarity of speech. That even the smallest child would understand the instruction today. I pray that you open the hearts and the minds of your people that we will be receptive instruction and even to chastening. Thank you now in advance. Hallelujah. Thank you in advance for spoken word. We give you glory now. We give you honor and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Look at the scripture right quickly. Philippians 4. Let's go back to where we were last week. Verse 6, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. <clears throat> Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, Whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good. If there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Hmm. Think on these things. Very briefly, before you sit down, I just want to talk to you from this thought. Practice what you believe. You may be seated in his presence. Practice what you believe. I began saying to you that this hour that we're in, this hour that we're living, uh, is a very strategic hour for the body of Christ. Now, let me pause and say that if you're waiting to make, waiting for me to make you happy, you should have gotten happy while you sang, I'm on my way. <laughs> because I believe there is some instruction that needs to be uh, adhered to by the body of Christ. On last Sunday, I, I spoke from the fourth chapter of Philippians and and the focus was on verse six and on verse seven where it said, be anxious for nothing. 
then verse 7 said that the very God of that, that and the peace of God which passes all understandings will keep your hearts and minds and when I looked at this it wasn't my intent to have a part two as a matter of fact when I went to Delaware last week this word just kept burning I, I was fighting it I thought maybe it was just indigestion, indigestion but it's uh it was the word that God wanted me to share with that pastor and that congregation on last week. And little did I know that it, it was in line with what that pastor had preached to his congregation on last Sunday morning. But as I pondered on the condition of, of our country, and I stated to you earlier that I've traveled uh, this country from west coast to east coast, and and out of the country and I share with the trustees on this morning that uh, that the body of Christ is is going through it's it's not a crisis what it is we know that Christ is and you'll get that when you get home uh, we're not in a, we're, we're, we're not in a crisis because we know that Christ is and we have to understand that because what is happening is that is that the struggle that we're experiencing as, as, as a body of Christ and even as a people, the struggle that we're experiencing really is, 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 has to show or prove what we're really made of. Uh, time is out for just talking about that I belong to such, such a church and, 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 and I'm saved and, and things of that nature. People stand down front and, and, and join their church. And I ask that question, do you know Jesus Christ personal Savior? And they say yes. And, and many of them don't really even realize what it means to have Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. But when you understand this, it's something because as I thought about the condition of our country from an economic and even a moral perspective, I, I thought about how powerful this disease of anxiety is. Uh, whether, whether we want to accept it or, or, or not, there is a spirit of anxiety. I got to say it again. There's a, see, because saints don't want to admit that they worry. Amen. Because some of us will, will say that, well, 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 well then uh, worry is natural. Well, worry is natural until you come to know Christ. And when you recognize that all of my help comes from the Lord. And anxiety has often, has, has often been called the great disease of our age. It is called the disease of our time because of the need for folk to have more. And what has happened is that we have gotten more, but we've lost to some extent what we had. Amen. Amen. We, we, are, we are so, we are so uh, under the gun, if you please. We, we are so tied up and wrapped up in, 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 in the material things that the Bible says will fade away. But it, but it has become uh, uh, a controlling the people of God. We're so wrapped up, so tied up, and we're so into what the world wants us to do and wants to have to where that it's so difficult to pray. Mm. Matter of fact, let's, let's be honest. It's not just difficult to pray. Prayer is almost non-existent now. Amen. And when we understand this, it's, it's something because when anxiety sets in or worry sets in, it becomes difficult to sleep. When you got all kind of things on you, it's difficult to sleep. I'll say it again. When you got all kind of struggles going on, it's difficult to sleep. Amen. And I've got to preach this because I've been there. <laughs> and God had to remind me who he is. You, you haven't gotten there. God had to remind your pastor who he is. And God had to remind me that it's his church. Hmm. Oh, my God. And they're his people. And the sheep of his pastor. My God. And when you understand this, it's something be, because anxiety and worry, listen, I, if I can help you out, is, is a universal addiction. It's not just at your house. 
It's not just at your particular church. It is a universal addiction. Oftentimes, when the believer has become weak in, in, in anxiety, I'm sorry, becomes weak, uh, then anxiety sets in, and when anxiety sets in, there's a gradual loss of a God consciousness. Amen. When you, listen, saints, let's be honest. When you're worried about stuff, you're not really thinking too much about God. Uh-oh. Amen. And what happens is that you hear your pastor talk like this and you'll make comments to yourself or, or either somebody else. Pastor just don't know. Well, pastor does know because he doesn't live in a bubble. Amen. And when you understand it, it's something because oftentimes when anxiety, set, anxiety sets in, your decisions become more carnal than spiritual. I'm going to say it again. When anxiety sets in, your decisions become more carnal than they are spiritual. Carnality simply means that you start making decisions from the flesh. And when I start making fleshly decisions, then when something happens, now I'm going to call on God in the spirit to try and help me out of my fleshly choices. Oh. So now, when you understand it, if your mind is not stayed on, on him, then you will forget that the Bible said in the book of Jude, now unto him who is able. Oh, I got to get this in your spirit. Saints. Now, now unto him who is able to what? Keep you from falling. Look at somebody and say, I ain't falling. I, I refuse to fall. I refuse to fall. Come what may, come hell or high water, I refuse to fall. Amen. I don't know about you, but what I heard the youth pastor say um, a few weeks ago, said that she don't know uh, where, where she be without God. She said, I, I can't make it without God. And you've got to get, we've got to get that same mentality and that same attitude. I cannot make it without God. Oh, I'm talking to, to myself. I can't make it without God. Amen. I don't know what tomorrow would bring without God. Oh, bless his name. Now, 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 to, now to some folks that might sound foolish. And, no, no. I've got to the point where I'm so sold out that I can't make it without him. That he is my meat and my bread. Oh. And like I told you on, the, on, the, on, on last week, I say my grace over everything. I say my grace over popsicles. I know some of y'all just pop the paper off and start sucking. <laughs> I say my grace over, listen, when I, get a, when I get a Three Musketeer, one of my favorite bars too, I unwrap it and say my grace over it. Oh, Pastor, that sound, oh, it's not crazy. I reached the point where it's in him I live, and him I move, and in him I have my being. And I'm grateful, oh my God, I'm grateful for everything that God does. I can't make it without him. You ought to get that same mentality. I cannot make it without God. So when I look at this, listen, the, the uh, truth of the matter is this. God forbids his children to worry. Uh-oh. God forbids his children to worry. Worry is a sign, listen, that there are some trust issues. Hmm. And we have, a, we, we have a very bad habit, Brother John, we have a very bad habit of them making it, making, coming across like, like we really just trust God for, for everything. And it's really not true. It really isn't true. That's why, that's why after, we, after we pray sometimes, we end up getting in a conversation and, and start to speak negatively about what we prayed about. It has to do with some trust issues. Worry or anxiety causes us to lose sight of who we belong to. The, the Bible says it is in him that we live, move, and have our being. Anxiety and worry requires too much energy. It's taking too much, saints. Oh, look at somebody say, but practice what you believe. When you understand this and when you are exhausted physically from the cares of life, when you find yourself worrying, worrying life day-to-day -day issues, then worshiping God and giving thanks to God is nowhere in the picture. Amen. Then you got to hear what helps you. And, and I stood here. What helps you is when you hear some of them old songs like how great thou art. 
Uh, those are the kind of things that helps us get back or get the right perspective as to how God has kept us to, to where we are uh, right now. I don't know if you would agree with, with me or not, but, but the attack on the saints of God has been subtle and it's been calculated. The enemy has been slowly gnawing at your faith. Mm. He's been slow biting at your faith. He hasn't, he hasn't taken it all, but God knows he has a large portion of it. Oh, that's right. You can say Jesus again. <laughs> because the bottom line is that, is that the enemy of our soul, he's not, he's not even after you and I so much backsliding. But, but what he is after when it comes to you and I, he's not after us backsliding. He's more after a gradual attack on your faith. Help me, Holy Ghost. Just look around you. There, there is an attack on, on the faith of the people of God. People don't love the church like they used to love the church. People don't love worship like y'all ain't going to help me today. People don't love worship like they used to love worship. And it has nothing to do, it has nothing to do with getting older. Mm. It has more to do with what we allow to come into these minds. Paul said, here's what you think on. You want to stay strong? He said, think on these things. Well, it's something because Paul said, be anxious for, for nothing but in prayer, but in everything by prayer and supplication. Uh, which means humble prayer and petition with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God. Paul said in, in prayer, you, you must understand the necessity of being thankful. That's why I told you I, I say my grace over popsicles. It, doesn't that sound crazy? I don't know, Bishop. I, 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 don't, I don't bless no popsicles. Well, <laughs> because I pray because I know it's not good for the nourishment of my body. <laughs> Especially those Nestle Crunch. Huh. And then them Popsicle Lights. Those are all right, but I got to eat them fast because they ain't no taste of those things. But I begin to thank God. My, my, my point is, I've learned to be grateful for everything. Oh, bless his name. Because whether you all believe it or not, and I've told you over the years that I've been here, I, 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 I was in the layoff mode for two years. And every meal was not, it was not pork chops and rice and collard greens and not every meal. There, there were some meals that was the same meal that was the night before. And maybe even the night before that. <laughs> now for, 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 for some of y'all that, that eat filet mignon every night, God bless your hearts. I can't even spell mignon. But I'm so grateful because I realize that God does supply. Anybody know what I'm talking about? God does supply needs. And, and so this, this is the season where you can't just say what you believe, but you got to practice what you believe. Paul said to the Philippian church, in spite of what's happening around you, he said, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. I know it's difficult to rejoice when ends aren't meeting. But thank God you got some ends. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Amen. I know it's difficult to, to rejoice when you got to eat beans and those hot dogs for another night. Thank God you got a hot dog with a bean. Good God. I know it's hard to rejoice when all kind of, when, when just those, God, I just don't seem to have enough. But thank God you have. Paul says, Rejoice always, and again I say rejoice. If there has ever been a time for the saints to pray for the spirit of discernment, it is now. Worry and anxiety will cause you to miss God. And the purpose of anxiety is to stress you and I out, but the solution has to do with the things that you spend most time thinking about. Last week, we concluded the message with, with, with verse 7 and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and your minds 
through Christ Jesus. Even though the Bible says God will keep your heart and, and mind, you must be careful what you allow to enter your mind. Many are defeated because of their thought life. And our thinking is something we must take charge over. If we, it will control us. And the messages that are sent to our, to our subconscious are more powerful and receiving more information than we may even realize. And let me give you some examples. Have you ever been in the store? Music has been playing. And you find yourself humming to the music. <laughs> from whatever commercial is on. Not only are you being persuaded to buy whatever product is being offered, but also there are certain values that are being presented also. There's a story about a woman who used to always cut off the ends of the beef, of the beef roast before cooking it. Her husband didn't understand all, all the waste that she would go through, so he asked her, why do you do that? She said she didn't know. It was just the way my mother always did it. And the next time she mom, she asked her, she asked her mom, mom, why, why, why do you always cut off the ends of the, of the roast before cooking it? Her mother said, I don't know. That's what grandmom always did. Fortunately, grandmom was still alive. And they asked grandma, said, grandmom, why do you always cut off the ends of the roast? And grandma responded, because it was the only way I could fit the roast in the pot I had. <laughs> Isn't that amazing how things are learned? Isn't it amazing how people can say things to you and get it in your mind? But Paul said, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. Now, this story may sound funny, but the truth of the matter is behaviors are learned and strong messages can come through the mind. Paul, Philippian church, he said, he told them how to overcome anxiety. He said in verse 6 and 7, in, in verse 6 and 7, he tells us how to obtain God's peace. But then in verse 8 and 9, he tells us how to maintain and keep God's peace. He says, now listen, in order to keep the peace of God, we have to occupy our minds with the right things. Somebody say right things. Paul gives us a list of how we can maintain and believe that God will make a way somehow. Well, he says, finally, at the conclusion of everything else that he said, he said, finally, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good re report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, he says, think on these things. The reason why it seems like the body of Christ has given up on our God is because we've let everything else come into these minds. Oh, bless his name. Let's be honest, saints. Worship is not at the top of our agenda. Mm, got real quiet there. Worship is not at the top of the agenda. And because we're human beings, we never look at ourselves. We've got to blame it on somebody else. Amen. Oh, if, if my church was, would, just, would just shout every time I'm there. If we'd be able to run around every time I'm there. It's not because when you get done running and get your breath back, the enemy of your soul is still present. And you'll find out that all you did was run and didn't get rid of him. But how rid of him is the way I think. And if I get my mind, somebody say, get my mind straight. If I get my mind straight, I'll stop blaming folk for the reason why I don't walk as close to God as I used to. Oh, bless his name. Hallelujah. If I get my mind straight, I won't have to be going around talking about I'm not being fed. I'm not this, I'm not that. Well, you're fed from where you eat at. You're fed by what you eat. You got the same fork everybody else has. Help me, Holy Ghost. What is happening is you trying to eat peas with a knife. <laughs> and you can't eat peas with a knife. P 
peas fall off a knife. You need something to hold it on to and you can't bounce here and there and go here and there and everywhere else and expect to have a good appetite. You're not going to help me now. One of our pastors went to Haiti a few years ago. I was sharing this with Tisa the other day. Went to Haiti and went on a mission tour and and they told them to, you know, stay within the group and we all go eat together. But he, but he decided he wanted to branch out and wanted to eat in another location. I don't know, I haven't been there, but, but another little location. And he, and, and he ended up eating, got some bad meat and literally almost died in Haiti. His wife sent word and said, just get my husband home. Don't let him die there, please. Don't, don't let him die. They, they got some medication in him, got him on the plane, and got him home. If he had only listened, he thought he could eat somewhere else that he had no knowledge of. Y'all not going to help me today. I'm trying to tell you that God is going to make a way somehow. I'm trying to tell you that even though all of us are going through a season right now, ain't nothing but y'all ain't gonna help me. It ain't nothing but a season. You are only going through a season and seasons pass. Y'all not gonna help me now. We just came through a winter like no other winter. Oh my God, everybody was stuck. Everybody, everybody paid money to have snow removed. It was fine, but winter is over now. And nobody can blame the winter for what's going on right now. We're in the summer months now. Now we got a season of summer and when summer passes, we will then have a fall. What am I saying? I'm trying to say to you that God will make a way somehow. Look at somebody say somehow, somehow. Listen, I don't know how he does it. Don't come to Bishop trying to get all the air. I don't know how he does it. I'm in the same place you're in right now. He's going to make a way somehow. Hear nothing else from the head. I'm telling you, he'll make a way somehow. I'm not going to rob God. I'm not going to steal from God. I'm not going to give up on God because God will make a way somehow. I'm going to think good thoughts and pure thoughts and honest thoughts and keep my mind stayed on him and he will open doors and make ways, he'll make a way some. How? Oh, God. Oh, somehow. Touch somebody and say somehow, somehow. Somehow, I don't know how he does it. I don't know the remedy. All I know if I walk up right before him, I'm one of his children. All I know is the Lord is my light and my salvation. All I know is the righteous have never been forsaken. Neither their seed begging bread. That's all I know. So those who sit back and blame folk, something wrong with you. You have no, no spiritual discernment at all. This thing we're in is a spiritual thing. Y'all ain't going to help me now. The church is under attack. And the church is not a building. The people of God are under great attack. Now listen to me. They're blaming everything that's going on in the United States on Obama. Everything. From the situation down at the border to the ozone layer. Everything's being blamed on Obama. The other day I was watching one brother and they had the speaker of the house on talking about this thing with the uh, immigration, I think it is. Then he turned, he showed a clip. All this stuff was signed into law by the last president. Who wasn't Obama. But nobody wants to call it what it is. And so you have some Judas running around the church who are dropping seeds. And you got to have enough discernment to discern that's from the pit of hell. Y'all ain't going to help me today. I ain't scared to preach this today. Oh, bless his name. 
you got some Judas spirits running around saying there's been mismanagement. Or there ain't been no mismanagement. It's the fact that the economy has dropped almost nothing. Y'all not going to help me. And the saints of God who claim to serve the living God have started to pull back from their faith in their God. Y'all not going to help me here now. Oh, bless his name. And as a result of that, you have a shortfall here and a shortfall there. Glory to God. Even in your own household, gasoline went up. Went to, the, went to the pump yesterday. Gasoline went up. Sometimes I try to get gas in Jersey because it makes me feel better. <laughs> I talk to somebody who will drive all the way to Jersey to get gas. Use up 10 gallons of gas to go get gas. <laughs> it's everywhere. Say what you want to say. It is everywhere. But guess what? Would you look at somebody on either side and say, but I'm still living. Hmm. Look at him and say, I'm still eating. And I'm still looking good. <laughs> uh, if you're sitting by yourself, tell yourself, I'm still looking good. <laughs> oh, my God. That, is the, that lets us know we serve a mighty good God. No, you're not rolling in money. My God, nobody in here that I know of is rolling in money. But God is supplying my needs. He said he would do it according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Tell somebody he is supplying my needs. And everything that I need, he supplies it. And I don't have to rob him by tithes to get something. <laughs> oh, bless him. I want to tell you now, listen, listen. The people of God are being challenged by one struggle after another. But listen to this. Every struggle is an indication that God will make a way somehow. Oh, bless his name. Somehow. I, I was very transparent this morning. I told the church, listen, listen, I... I I just want to tell y'all, I have had some sleepless nights. Ask my wife. She'll, she'll tell you. She, she gets on me. She, she said, you talked all night. Who were you talking to? You talked all night. Worried about stuff. God gave me this word while I was, on the, while I was away last week. He said, be anxious for nothing. And it starts with the head. Be anxious for nothing. You know what we need? We, we need more prayer about it than talking about it. Uh, we need more prayer about it. See, the carnal-minded folk talk about it. <laughs> see, see, Judas's problem was this. Judas had a problem. Judas made it sound like he was really concerned about the church's money. <laughs> Judas would have, no, that's why he talked about, you know, they could have used that money uh, to buy some oil or some expensive perfume. They, they could have used that for something else rather than it being used for what it was, which was worship. Hmm. He tried to hinder worship. Oh, my, you're all going to catch this in a minute. He tried to hinder worship, but he came across like he was a voice in the wilderness that had all this wisdom, but it wasn't that at all. Oh, bless his name. I don't know about you, but God is in the business of making ways out of no ways. God is, a, he is opening, not about to, he is already opening. The door I preached to myself on Thursday night up in Hartford, Connecticut, I preached an old sermon, but I tell you, it came back new in my spirit. Said he, and the word said, your answer is at the door. My God, my God. I kept looking at the door. I said, God, I believe it's there. I believe that everything you promised us is going to come to pass. Everything that, that you said you're going to do is going to come to pass. God, I, I made up my mind. I'm not going to look to the left or to the right, but keep my focus on the things that God has said because souls are at stake. 
And the enemy may not get you and I to backslide. But what he does, he, he gets emotions. So we got a whole lot of attitudes walking around. Y'all ain't going to help me now. A, a whole lot of accusations being made. A whole lot of fingers being pointed. <laughs> and what you don't realize you're doing is you're showing nothing more than you're aiding the things of the enemy and don't even know it. That's the sad part, that the enemy is using you and you don't even know it. My God. Well, he said this, and I'm going to wrap this up. The people of God are being challenged by one struggle after another. But every struggle is an indication. God's going to make a way. And the reason why you must hold on in this hour of struggle and hardship is because we have something, listen to this, have something that the unbeliever doesn't have, Joanne. Ask me, what is it? I'm glad you asked. We have a somehow. Ooh. No excitement. No glory. No hallelujah. No preach bishop. We have a somehow. Every time you pray about a matter, you are really saying, God, somehow. When we pray at the close of service for Sister Stallworth, we're going to be praying a prayer, prayer of somehow. Somehow, God, allow the doctors to get to the root of that condition. Somehow. Because, first of all, we're not a doctor. We're not God. We pray somehow. I wish you'd touch somebody and say somehow, somehow, somehow. Somehow means an, un, an undetermined way. Oh, my God, my God. It means an undetermined way. It means by any means possible. It means in some way not specified, apparent, or known. Somebody shout somehow. God is about to do it somehow. I don't know how he's going to do it. I don't know when he's going to do it. But there are two prophecies that are hanging over the head of this church. That was given to me as a pastor that told me that the latter months of this year will be the greatest months this church has ever experienced. Y'all not going to help me now. It's all right. You want to know what, what my problem is with you right now? I just gave you a word of prophecy and you let it go right over your head. That's why doors aren't opening that's why they're not being healed. That's why ways are not being made. It's because we're taking the word of God too lightly. Some of you have already made up in your mind, I ain't doing no more. I ain't doing no more. I'm tired of doing. Well, that's what the enemy has done to all of us. Has made us feel like what you've done is in vain. He hasn't got you to backslide in your actions. I'm sorry, in your mind, but he has gotten you to backslide in your actions. Oh, bless his name. Now you're sitting between choosing sides now. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, you're now choosing sides now. Uh, who, uh, who do I listen to? Uh, bro, sister, Reverend, so and so, or or do I hang on the words of my shepherd? Y'all not gonna help me now. <laughs> oh my God! Well, wait a minute. You know, the shepherd, he's just a man, just like me. He put his pants on just like me. Oh, you're right. But when I pull up my pants, I have the presence of God. <laughs> so now, whose report? Will you believe? I choose to believe the report of the Lord. Oh, uh, well, wait a minute, Pastor. You, you're making this too spiritual. This thing isn't everything not spiritual. Oh, this situation is spiritual. That's where the discernment comes into play. This situation is spiritual. 
Some of you need to hang the phone up and stop talking to folk who have nothing but negative stuff to, 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 to say. Communicating with them. Stop hanging out with them. Stop letting them buy you stuff so they can buy your loyalty. Preach, Bishop. Oh, no, no, no. Don't y'all say it. I'm preaching myself. It has become easier to tie into a lie and a misnomer than to stand on the truth. That's why Paul said, listen, I got to help you Philippians. Finally, my brothers and sisters, whatsoever things pure and lovely and just this and the other, he said, spend your time thinking on those things. Uh, I told you, this is not a message for jumping. Oh, as a matter of fact, some of you might think I'm talking right at you. Let me help you out. I am. That's my job as a shepherd. These other preachers can't preach like this. It's my job as a shepherd. If you think I'm talking about you, I am. If you think I heard something, I probably have. Because what scatters the sheep, little small foxes, destroys the vine. You want to know what the tough side of this is? You got to make up your mind, I'm going to tighten myself up get a hope to the horns of the altar and stay there till God changes it. <laughs> the coward's way is to run. I'm saying nothing now. The coward's way is to get out. The coward's way is to, is to lose all hope and let go of things. That's the coward's way out. But the warrior stays right there. The warrior stays right there and knows, listen, prayer worked before, prayer will work again. That's why David could not use Saul's equipment. I was a Saul. Saul, Saul said, here, 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 take this, take my sword, take my shield. David was for David said, no, 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 no. I got to use what I know works. Touch somebody and say, use what you know works. Oh, my God, I got to use what I know. The Bible says he had a slingshot and took some smooth stones because this worked before. I've killed the bear. I've killed the lion. I shut the devil's mouth. If it worked before, it'll work now. Slap somebody a high five and say, it'll work now. What is needed in this hour, and I know I've been up quite a while, but it's my prerogative. Do what I want to do. <laughs> what needs, what is needed in this hour is for the saints to look at your condition and say somehow ever been a season that you need God to answer prayer. It's now. It's now. This is that season. You know what concerns me? And I said this on Thursday night up in Hartford. What concerns me is my assignment as a man of God has increased. I'm on a time frame with this assignment. And the things that <clears throat> I'm concerned about right now, I ought not be concerned about. Y'all gonna catch this in a minute. The things I ought not be being anxious about, I'm finding myself being anxious. the lives of sowing into for years. I ought not have to worry about them. Let me good now. If you've got a, if you've got a teenager and a six-year-old, a seven-year-old, 
there's some expectations you have from that teenager. You shouldn't have to tell the teenager, don't, don't touch the candy dish on the table. You should have to tell the t- teenager that the, don't put your hand on the stove. Shouldn't. If you are, then you need to have the teenager test it. But, but <laughs> help me kids, but it, it ought not be. Because once they reach a certain age of maturity, there's some things that ought to just be natural. You shouldn't have to tell a 70-year-old babe. Or at least babe today. <laughs> now you might have to go in and babe a three-year-old. But you should you ain't got no business going and babing a 17-year-old. Because they ought to know it's natural to babe. Stay with me now. Same thing in the spiritual. After a while, it's going to be natural to be in Bible study. You're not going to help me now. It ought to be natural to come to worship. It ought to be natural. But now newborn babes, new new members just joined, just got saved, we, 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 we speak to them. We, we even call them. Shouldn't have to be with mature people. Oh, my God. Every book that Paul wrote, if you take time and study, Paul had to send words of discipline. Discipline to the body of Christ. He said, listen, what's going to help you? Get your mind off that negative stuff. Don't let negative people occupy your time. Because they'll take time away that you'll never get back. Hear me good now. I got a call a few weeks ago from from a brother from another church as as the president. I didn't let him get even a quarter of the way into the conversation. I said, put it in writing. Send it to me. I'll get back with you. Well, Bishop said, no, 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 no. I'm not going to talk to you about it now. Talking negative about us, about us, pastor. I said, Just put it in writing. That was the end of the story. Sometimes you just got to shut folk down. See, some of you have run together so long and been so close that you don't even recognize that that which you hooked up with has not been good for your spirit. It's not a time for for us to sit back and blame people. It's it's a time to come together and pray. Everything ain't, ain't prayer. Everything is prayer. You get your direction from prayer. Oh, come on, saints. You get your direction, not from Dr. Oz. In Ofri? Pre? What's the name? Bro? You get it from prayer. Something happens when you pray. The Lord will make a way. Somehow. The Bible says while Jesus was moving through the crowd, a woman came up to him and touched the hem of his garment. She came with a somehow spirit. She said, if I could just but touch the hem of his garment, she knew if she could just touch the hem of his garment, she would be made whole. And I believe that's what's going to bring the spirit of healing back into the church. The spirit of unity back into the church will be those that have a somehow praise. I purposely chose to preach like this today. Brother John was trying to help me. He, he wanted me to get into a, into a preaching voice, but I refused to go there <laughs> because I needed to give you instruction. I've come to tell you, if, this, if there's ever been a sermon 
that needed us to lay out before the Lord and kneel before the Lord, it's this one. Nobody's running around the walls. Nobody's falling out. Now, for some of you, you're going to leave and say, we, man, I, I'm going to go somewhere where I can have church. You just had church. But we have gotten so locked into, unless, unless we're loud and all the other kind of stuff, and there's nothing wrong with it, please, please, nobody will outdance me. But there are times when you just got to sit down Listen. Stand with me. I'm done. You are Alpha and Omega.